now I'm going to introduce you, uh, I mean, theoretical uh, presentation of, of Moutar, what we are doing. Uh, so before all, uh, Champagne Moutar is a family. Uh, so the, the family traces back um, uh, from 1642 in the, in the source of the Champagne area, which is called Côte des Bars. So since the ninth generation, uh, Moutard grows uh, grapes, so in South of Champagne. So it's a pretty uh, huge, uh, huge history. Uh, so the family start making Champagne and uh, since 20 years, we have bought uh, some vineyard also in Burgundy. And in Burgundy, north of Burgundy, close to Chablis. I will show you on the map after because uh, South of Champagne and north of Burgundy uh, are pretty close uh, area. So that's why in the first page, in the page what you, uh, that you see, we have the logo of Champagne Moutard, the logo of Domaine Moutard, which is the Burgundy. And the third logo is a distillery uh, because we do also spirit, uh, local spirit from Champagne. Uh, and this distillery is based on the same location than the, the Champagne house. So in, in Buxeuil, in Champagne. So we do also very nice, uh, very nice spirit. Uh, we are the second biggest uh, distillery in Champagne and uh, there is only two distilleries in Champagne. So everybody is hearing me? Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I'm just <laughs> muted everybody. Yes. So that's why it's so quiet. <laughs> okay. I, do, I did laugh. I did laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, no, because it's a, li a little strange because uh, it seems that I'm, I'm, I'm talking to my presentation because I only see the presentation. So it's anyway, so now you can see uh, the boss, the boss of the company. So this is Francois uh, and his two sisters, uh, Agnès and Véronique, who manage the company since uh, 1980, uh, so after uh, their parents. So now this is the, 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 the number nine generation of, uh, of Moutard at the head of the company. And Francois, Agnès and Véronique uh, actually uh, increased a lot the business uh, because at the beginning uh, when they start, they only produce uh, 100,000 bottles and now we do uh, 1 million bottles. So, so that's why the, 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 the increase of the business, uh, uh, so, so they, they increase a lot uh, the business since they took care of the, the company. Is that uh, 1 million bottles of champagne or everything? Yes. Yeah, yeah, only, I'm just speaking about champagne. Yeah, so from 100,000, uh, so 30, 40 years ago, and, uh, and from now we do a little bit less than 1 million, and we did before more than 1 million. But, uh, but because also champagne got a lot of success this past uh, 40 years, uh, so the big business of champagne was like uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, where we, we had a, a big boom of, uh, of champagne. Now, uh, Champagne is, uh, is pretty stable, a little decrease. Uh, so it's, it's a little bit harder than before, but uh, uh, 20 years ago, it was very easy to sell Champagne, actually. The, 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 the most important was to find enough grapes to be able to produce. But from now, we need to, to make sure about the sales and the sales is very important comparing to, to before. So now it's some pictures of the, the building of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the Champagne part. The distillery on the, on the right uh, with the pot and also uh, an, an image of the doors at the, on the Burgundy. So the location, Champagne uh, is uh, not far from Paris, two, hour, two hours uh, on the west, uh, east, sorry, east of Paris. And uh, we are right uh, on, the, on the south. So the south part of Champagne is called Côte des Bars. So Côte des Bars, and you have Bar sur Seine, which is the main city. And we are uh, based uh, in uh, like 10 kilometers from Bar sur Seine. So this, uh, this area of Champagne, Côte des Bars, um, is pretty far away 
from uh, Rams, which is the, the city on the north. So uh, we are closer to Chablis, so north of Burgundy, than to Reims. Reims. And Côte des Bar is, uh, is famous for the growing of the Pinot Noir. We, we, we grow 70% of the, of the vineyard is, uh, is only Pinot Noir. It's the king, the king of the grapes in, in our area. And we do also Chardonnay, uh, Chardonnay. Pinot Meunier is, uh, we've, we have a very little bit of Pinot Meunier. Pinot Meunier is more, uh, we find a lot of Pinot Meunier more on the west uh, part of Champagne in the Valley de la Marne that you can see on the, on the left. But Côte des Bar is, is really, uh, uh, really Pinot Noir. So on this map, you find uh, the, the orange color. So the, the orange color is the, the Champagne Vineyard. So that means you cannot grow uh, grapes to make Champagne anywhere else except this area. So that's why Champagne is so expensive. I mean, the land of, uh, to, to be able to grow grapes to make Champagne because uh, this is pretty selective. Uh, selective and uh, and the, the one hectare of uh, of vineyard uh, in Champagne can raise like one million euro, uh, so that's why Champagne is so expensive, and it's very hard to find a new new plot, a new space to uh, to to buy uh, land actually in uh, in the Champagne area. So. And the wall of the Champagne represents uh, 33,000 hectares. Uh, and we produce every year 300 million bottles of Champagne. So it's like uh, 10,000 uh, 10, uh, bottles of Champagne uh, per hectare, just to give you some, some figures. And this year, we're going to lose a lot of million bottles of Champagne due to the, the COVID-19. Uh, uh, expectation is uh, we may uh, lost we may lose um, uh, like 100 uh, uh, sorry we're gonna lose 100 million bottle so it's uh, it's it's big 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 uh, big loss it's, it's why is that uh, expect why do you expect uh, to have such a reduction uh, because of the of the COVID, and uh, we have also a lot of stock. Uh, we have a lot of stock in Champagne, so so, so that's why uh, uh, we are not going to uh, to put more Champagne in bottle with the juice that that we're gonna get, because we have a lot of stock currently. We have some billion bottle of stock in in the wall of the Champagne. Uh, so, so, so that's why. And because of the, the price of, sh of champagne raise a lot every year. And so that's why uh, you can lose also the customers with a price increase. And, uh, and the champagne during the COVID, you know, was not uh, a necessity. <laughs> so, so that's why we lost a lot of, uh, of, of sales. But I'm speaking about the wall of the champagne. So for Muta, for us, it has been pretty a pretty normal month of course we lost some sales but not too much it was a uh, like 10 percent less than than last year so for us it's fine but for people who sell champagne to to supermarket uh, to uh to to some country like brazil or us uh, it has been very hard you know due to the the, the, the situation so this expectation is just a, a, re a reduced expected sales and so yeah. reduced uh, production to maintain the pricing and okay i understand it's market driven yes 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 exactly exactly but it's the only the first time since uh, uh, like uh, one century that we have this kind of uh, of decrease it's 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 pretty hard you know it's uh, it's like um, uh, you know it's um, it's uh, yeah he has he has been uh, it's 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 very very hard anyway so we have a, of course we have the big brand names you know you know the big brand names like LVMH of course they are strong enough uh, to cover the the situation 
but you have some uh, medium sized producer and uh, they can yeah you know they can close the company because they are not in a in a good uh, in a good health in terms of uh, of finance uh, so we may have some uh, some uh, Yes, some, some problem for this kind of company, but for us it's fine. <laughs> for us it's fine. That's good news, thank you. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, so actually uh, we can speak about champagne, uh, you know, all day long. Um, I'm, I, uh, I'm very passionate, so we, but I'm going to try to be focused on, the, on what we are doing with uh, at Muta. But if you want any, any information about uh, anything, uh, I will be pleased to, to reply. So now it's our map, so the map of Moutar. So just to show you where we are based. So Buxeuil, Buxeuil where, the, the, where we grow the champagne, not far from Lérissé. I don't know if you are familiar with this wine, Lérissé. It's the only rosé steel wine of champagne. So there is only one village in the wall of the champagne area, which is a load. Uh, to do a uh, steel rosé wine uh, from, 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 from Pinot Noir, actually. And we do also this wine, which is called Rosé de Rissé. South, uh, you have Molom and Chablis, and this is where also we have uh, the majority of our vineyard in, uh, in Burgundy. And in Burgundy, we produce, of course, Chablis, which is the most popular wine that we are producing uh, from Burgundy, but we do also Tonnerre, uh, Epineuil, uh, we do also some Saint-Brie uh, and, uh, and um, some Aligoté uh, also. And we do a lot of sparkling wine from this area. Uh, the, the sparkling wine in Burgundy, this area is very famous because we, of course, we grow uh, Chardonnay, but we profit from a, a very nice minerality like, like, like in, in Buxeuil. And we do very, very good sparkling wine from, uh, uh, from, from here. And as you can see, we are very close to Champagne. So sometimes it's hard to compare, you know. And we do also method traditionnel. Uh, and the method traditionnel, we, we also, we, uh, we take our, our grapes from this area to, to, make, the, to make the method traditionnel. So between uh, Chablis and Buxeuil, you have like a one hour of driving. So it's very close. So some pictures of the, the, the vineyard in Champagne. So during winter, of course. So in, in the Champagne area, it's, uh, it's a lot of small, small plots, you know, it's, it's uh, very separated. Uh, uh, so it's no, you know, it's a lot of curves. So the, um, the terroir of Côte des Bars, so where we are, uh, we are focused, uh, we are based on the Kimi region, on the Kimi region soil. So the Kimi region soil is a very old geology uh, from the Ju Jurassic uh, times, so 300 million years ago. It was the a tropical sea where we are now. And that's why we, we, we have a, a clay limestone soil with a lot of uh, sediment from oysters, so from the Jurassic time. And all this uh, element brings a lot of min minerality uh, to, the, to the wine, to the, to, to the champagne. So that's why uh, the, 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 the philosophy of Moutard is also to bring this uh, Kimiridgian uh, aspect to the, on, into the champagne. And, and the best example we have is our cuvée uh, Champersin, uh, which is a Chardonnay, 100% uh, Chardonnay Champagne. Uh, we, we show the best example of what is minerality in Champagne. So it's very unique soil and uh, it's, uh, it's very different to north of Champagne where it's a little bit more chalky uh, or limestone. Here we are on the clay, clay and limestone both and, uh, and a lot of stones as well. So, so that's why south of Champagne and north of Champagne, it's completely different style of, uh, of, of wine. And that's why also you can be very uh, surprised when you drink the Brut Grand Cuvée, so what we are selling at Epson, 
because it's a pure Pinot Noir, but sometimes you can have the sensation of it is a Chardonnay because of this, uh, the, the, the Kimi Regia, this minerality, uh, which, which brings the finesse, the, the, the fineness and the elegance and the long, last, long lasting finish, uh, but for a Pinot Noir Champagne. So it's, it's very surprising. Some pictures of Buxeuil, so a small village of 100 uh, habitants with Francois. Some uh, pictures of, uh, so old pictures uh, from, uh, you know, from a long time ago. Uh, so, and we have also a truck, uh, the, one, one of the first truck uh, that we we use in Champagne to bring the to carry the barrels at uh, it's a long time ago, and we have also a mobile uh, pot, copper pot to to make this uh, to to make the distillation. So as I said before, so we produce one million bottles per year. Uh, we sell. Uh, mainly to export into more than 70 countries now. Uh, we are, we, so we, we own 25 hectares of, of vineyard, but we also buy grapes to, to some other uh, growers. So we have supply on 100 uh, hectares. So that's mean to be able to produce the 1 million bottle, of course, you need to have this 100 hectares of, of grapes supply. So this is what we have. And in our vineyard, we have also uh, not only three grapes, but six. Because actually in Champagne, we are allowed to grow Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier, Pinot Blanc, Petit Mélier, Chardonnay, and Arban. So Moutard is, uh, is, is famous to grow these six grapes varietal. So this is the cuvée that we call the cuvée six cépage. Uh, and we do also 100% of Arban, you know, pure Arban. And we're going to release soon a pure Petit Mélier. So it's very, uh, very interesting champagne. Uh, very few producers pr produce this champagne because, of course, you need to have these grapes in your vineyard. And we have all the six. Uh, and uh, and uh, it's, uh, it works uh, pretty well. Everybody knew that uh, six grapes is a load in Champagne or? Yep. Yes, I, I, I did know that, but I, it's very rare to have a single varietal like, uh, like Arban. That's amazing. Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's pretty nice, actually. Very nice Champagne. Very unique, you know, something that you cannot compare to any, any other Champagne house, you know. It's, it's very unique, uh, unique uh, in the taste but still good, you know, it's some, sometimes it can be unique and not really good, but it's, it's, it's a really impressive uh, quality champagne. So some pictures of the, of the vineyard. So of course in Champagne, it's, uh, it's, um, it's manual. So everything needs to be done by hand. So hand harvest. Uh, so we, we need, of course, a lot of people in a short period of time which is qu quite problematic uh, because, you know, we don't have enough people in our company to, to do the harvest in a short time. Uh, to give you an example, uh, we need uh, 100 people for, uh, for two weeks of work. So that's why we take people from uh, Est of Europe to help us uh, in making the harvest because, as I said, we need to do it by hand. So this year we're going to have a big uh, big harvest in terms of uh, quantity of grapes. We, uh, we had a lovely springs. We have a lovely summer. We didn't have any bad weather. So that's mean we have a lot of grapes now. Uh, so, something that you have to know also for Champagne. It's not because you have a lot of grapes in your vineyard that you can pick up everything. We pick up what we can. Uh, I mean, what CVC is allow us. So that means this year, uh, CVC is going to allow uh, to release uh, eight eight thousand kilograms of grapes per hectare. Even if you have a double, you only harvest eight thousand kilograms 
uh, per hectare. Do, do, do you understand what I say? Yep. Yeah, yes, there, what's, the, what's the normal allowed quantity? So the average is uh, uh, 12, 12, uh, no, I mean, uh, yeah, between 10 and 12,000. Uh, but this year, because of the situation with the COVID, uh, we, the sales are decreasing a lot. So it is not necessary to produce a lot of champagne this year uh, because we still have a lot of stock. So that's why the, our administration, so what, which is called CEVC, uh, uh, doesn't allow uh, to to pick up a lot of grapes, so it's a, it's a it's a way of managing uh, the the production, you know. Because if you have too much production, price decrease, you know. So that's why the goal is to still keep a stable price, not increase, not decrease. So pretty stable. So 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 that's why they impact the the production. Will that result in higher quality uh, wine from a uh, lower, lower harvest? And then yeah. will you put that into distillation? Yes. So, so that's been, so this year we're going we're gonna to keep, uh, so the, of course, the 8,000 kilograms uh, to make the champagne. But if, of course, we're going to have many, many more kilograms. Uh, so we are going to, we, we, for, for Muta, we are going to keep it anyway to make some uh, ratafia, to make some spirit as well so 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 for for us we don't waste anything everything is used so so it's uh, we are lucky to have the distillery so so we are using it so yeah so that was for uh, for the harvest which is coming soon it's going to be early this year it's going to be like uh, 20th of uh, of august so every year uh, we we are in advance you know before it was more uh, mid september sometimes end of september but with the global warming uh, uh, you know it's uh, earlier and uh, earlier so yeah with the global warming so so the global warming is helping uh, also the uh, so the ripeness of the grapes so that's why we have uh, we have a very nice uh, we're gonna have a very nice harvest. You know, if we don't have any accident like a hail, uh, so it is going to be very very nice harvest. But what's going to happen in fifty years with the global warming? It won't be the same. So certainly, so for us, for for the moment, is helping us a lot. But in in fifty years. Uh, it won't be the same. So, because the in Champagne we need some cool temperature, especially during the night. Uh, we need, uh, we mean uh, like a pretty warm temperature during the day, but cool during the during the night for to help the acidity of the grapes. And you know, to make a good sparkling wine, as acidity is the most important. So we to keep this acidity, we we need also some uh, some cool cool weather, you know, especially for the Pinot Noir. That's why Oregon Pinot Noir is working very well uh, due to the cool, uh, the cool weather. Yeah, everybody is uh, hearing me because I, I don't hear anything. Yeah, we're still here. <laughs> we're here. Perfect, thank you. Merci. So the... Um, as I said, in, in Champagne, it's, um, you, you know, we have a lot of competition all over the world. So the, the Champagne got a lot of success 20 years ago uh, with a big boom of the sales. But now uh, we, are, we fight against uh, Cava, we fight against Prosecco, we, we fight about a lot of competition for sparkling wine. Of course, Champagne is still, uh, I mean, of course, I'm not very objective, but for, for me, we are the best, one of the best sparkling winemaker, uh, at least, you know, the, the, the oldest, but we need to be careful of the, of, the, of the competition, of course, because of course in Italy, they are doing very, very nice sparkling wine, uh, Australia as well, I mean, almost everywhere. So the goal in Champagne is for us to be a little bit diversified and uh, we, want to, we want to change a little bit the practice on the vineyard. 
So the goal is to have uh, no uh, CO2 carbon emission, uh, no phytosanitary product and fertilizer uh, and wet killers in, in the vineyard, uh, a big decrease of water consumption in all process. And uh, so, so the goal is, is not to become biodynamic, but a, a kind of. So, but for the wall of the champagne, not, not for co a couple of producers, but for, for the wall of the, of the association of producers. So in, in a, for Moutar, we, we're gonna get this HVE certification, height environmental value uh, this year or next year. So we will put this logo in uh, all our label for uh, when we're gonna get this, uh, this practice, this, this, um, uh, this, um, this certification, which will be anyway an obligation in a couple of years for the wall of the champagne. So, so it's good, you know, it's, uh, so maybe it's going, we are going to lose some uh, productivity but on the other hand, we, we fight against the, the global warming and the, and the CO2 carbon emission. So, so we will be more, much more green because actually Champagne got bad reputation a couple of years ago. I mean, a couple, uh, uh, 10, 10 to 20 years ago as well, because uh, Champagne was a lot of, uh, we were a big uh, consumer of uh, pesticides of phytosanitary product because we are on the north of France, north, and, and we use a lot of chemical things to help the, to help the, 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 the grapes growing. And, uh, but now we want to be the, the opposite. So we, we do, uh, yes. But it's pretty trendy as well to, to, to do it. But, uh, sh but Champagne will be famous to do this, uh, this environment, this high environmental value. So some pictures of the harvest. Uh, I mean, after the, the harvest, when the grapes uh, comes to the to the press. So we have two two big press of uh, eight. Uh, we put eight thousand kilograms of grapes per press. It's a process of three hours. So it's a pneumatic press. Uh, we press gently the, 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 the grapes. So we have two kinds of, uh, of process. So we have the press for the Chardonnay and we have the press of Pinot Noir. The press of Pinot Noir because, uh, as you know, Pinot Noir is a black grapes, but the juice inside is white. So to avoid the maceration, we press uh, very uh, gently uh, the, the Pinot Noir to avoid this maceration. So the, the, the juice uh, is coming more quickly than for than when we do for the Chardonnay. So, so but, yeah. And after the, the juice that we press, so to give you an example, when we press, when one full press is 8,000 uh, kilograms and we extract uh, 4,000 liters of juice. So for the first press that we call the, uh, yes, cuvee, and we press a second time uh, and we extract 1,000 more liters, which is called Thai, which is not the best. So we keep this second uh, juice for, to make ratafia, to make a spirit, to, to distill. Uh, so that's mean for, to make our champagne, we only keep, uh, we only keep the, the first juice of the press. So after the, we put the juice into the, the big, tank like this. So we are using both uh, stainless tank and also barrels, wooden barrel to make, uh, to make the fermentation. So we have a big barrel rooms as well in, the, in our caves uh, and also a big, uh, big tank rooms. Uh, we have a big, big capacity of, uh, to welcome the, the juice. So now it's pictures of when we put the, the wine into the, the bottle. So the fermentation um, takes around two weeks, a little bit more two weeks. So when the juice is becoming wine and, uh, and after we have the malolactic fermentation. So sometimes we, we do it for some cuvee, but for some other cuvee, we don't do the, the malolactic. But uh, I mean, from uh, 
September, October, November, December. So yeah, we need actually six months to make to make uh, the the final wine. So the final wine that we are going to put into the into the bottle. So what we call les vins clairs, vin clair. Uh, and uh, when we put the wine into the bottle, we had some um, some mixture. So it's uh, it's uh, it's the the yeast, the sugar. Uh, was going to create the the second fermentation into the bottle. So what we call en français liqueur de tirage. And uh, and after we're going to have the prise de mousse. So the so when the bubbles are going to start. So that's mean the the bottle is going to be uh, uh, with a big pressure, and uh, and we're going to wait minimum of three years on the lees. Uh, before uh, releasing it. So this is our, our caves and, uh, and the pupitre. The pupitre is helping us to make uh, uh, to make the, 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 the remuage, so the, 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 the railing. To, so the goal of the railing is to, because when you have the bottle of champagne uh, at the horizontal position, we, we call it sur lat. Uh, we have a lot of sediment, the dead sediment, so from from the the second fermentation. So the sugar has consumed the uh, the, the yeast, and the yeast are no more uh, lives. So the yeast the, the yeast are dead, and after we need to extract all this sediment uh, from the bottle. So that's why we are doing a railing process by hand or by machine like this. And uh, step by step, take a bottle. Do you see me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we every day we turn a little bit the bottle, and uh, the goal is to gather all the sediment uh, on the top of the bottle like this. It will be at the uh, the last step will be like this, and after we we disgorge. We disgorge the bottle, so we freeze uh, uh, only the this kind, the, the this uh, this part of the bottle. So a little ice cube is going to be to 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 be created, and after we with a machine we extract the with the pressure of the bottle, we extract this ice cube where we have all the the sediment, and after we refill. Uh, the bottle with the missing quantity of wine, and after we close with the cork and uh, the muselet. Uh, so that's mean the, the bottle has been open. So that's mean when the bottle has been open, it you are losing pressure, of course. Uh, but when you are putting uh, some wine, and we put also some uh, liqueur de dosage. So the dosage is. Uh, is the quantity of sugar which is going to create the, the sweetness of the champagne. So brut, demi-sec, uh, extra brut, brut nature. We have different uh, designation for, for that. But most of the time it's brut, so that's mean 10 grams per liter. And when you put the, the dosage and the, the missing wine, uh, we still have a little bit of, uh, of uh, refermentation, but slight. Uh, which is going to recreate uh, some more pressure on the bottle. And to avoid oxidation, because the wine is in contact with hair a little bit during the degorgement, uh, we have a technique to create some mousse. Uh, uh, so we lose a little bit of wine, but uh, when you have the mousse, uh, there is no air which is coming on on, into the bottle. So we call this method the, the, the jetting, and uh, so that's why it's uh, it's almost impossible. For, I mean, for Moutard Champagne to have a, um, oxidation bottle for for Champagne, oxidized. Sorry, oxidized. I'm losing a bit my English because I I travel less now. <laughs> Your English is excellent. Thank you. Yeah, yes, it, it's a French Which, English actually. <laughs> Which wines are hand riddled versus using the gyro palette? Uh, Giro Palette, uh, I mean, from now with the technology, uh, almost everything uh, except the big bottles, 
euh, like uh, Jeroboam, uh, Nabucodonosor, uh, Balthazar, you know, the, the big content bottle. Uh, and for some cuvée, like uh, cuvée des deux sœurs, uh, this bottle, which is uh, not easy bottle to work with because it's, the shape is very, uh, uh, very different. So we, we, we do, but, but you know, it's very small quantity. So we do it by hand. But by hand, it's two months. Uh, to make a full process of riddling and uh, by machine uh, it's going to be like uh, six seven days so it's pretty quick with a big machine yeah so that's why uh, that was the process or the, the, we make champagne basically I mean uh, of course it was reduced presentation because it's much more complicated <laughs> so well, if you don't have, thank you if you don't have any more question about how we make champagne we can uh, now we can speak about uh, the, the the range of champagne mutar yeah i think that would be fine thank you okay So at Muta, we produce um, now a little bit more than 15 champagnes. So what you have uh, in, uh, with Epson, uh, you have the, the Brut Grand Cuvée. Uh, Brut Grand Cuvée is, of course, what we produce the most. It's the pillar of, uh, of, uh, of Muta. So it's a blend of 100% of Pinot Noir. Uh, of course, there is a percentage of our own vineyard, but we also buy uh, or some Pinot Noir from other location, but in Côte de Bas. So that's mean we have 12, 12 different villages uh, on this bottle uh, of, of Pinot Noir. Uh, three years of aging on the lees, uh, tank fermentation as well, a stainless tank on a big batch, on the, on the big uh, tank to be able to have uh, regular quality, I mean, uh, al always constant quality, because as you can see on the, on the pictures, uh, we are using 300 hectoliters of stainless tank. So that's mean one tank is a batch of 40,000 bottle. So, so, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty big. And, uh, and a degorgement with uh, three years of aging on the lease and 10 grams of dosage. So it's not too sweet, not too dry, but uh, still a little bit more sweeter than the, the other champagne that we produce. So in terms of rating, we have a uh, 90 point one advocate, 91 one spectator, and uh, you know, some other good ratings, but uh, this is the most popular one, this, what, what I wrote on the, on the PPT. So the, uh, so the, the, the Brut Grand Cuvée is, um, uh, it's pretty easy drinking uh, champagne. Uh, we have, um, uh, it's, it's, I mean, of course I know very well the Brut Grand Cuvée, but I, I don't have any glass to, 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 to tell you some, um, uh, some, uh, some tasting things, but uh, uh, we have a lot of um, brioche, brioche note, the pastry note, uh, some almond, uh, some uh, a little bit of cherry, cherry, um, uh, ch cherry, uh, st stone cherry. Uh, so it's very refreshing champagne, a lot of minerality as well, and uh, and pretty easy drinking. And uh, it's uh, yeah, it's it's a very it's a good champagne also for aperitif, uh, any kind of banquet. Uh, so yeah, so we were pretty well with uh, with with the Brut Grand Cuvée. So next year we're gonna change the bottle. Uh, it's, it won't be this bottle anymore. I mean the shape of the bottle. So the shape that we have currently is the regular bottle in Champagne, and I'm going to show you the new frame of bottle. I don't have the, the label, but. Uh, it will be this uh, this lab this uh, bottle, and uh, it will be right written muta on it, graved in, on on uh, in this part of the bottle, and also on the on the bottom, muta champagne muta. 
So it's a special bottle only for Mouta, for Brut Grande Cuvée, for the Rosé, and for the Blanc de Blanc, for the Champassin. Very nice. I like it. Yeah. So do you have the Rosé at Epson? I'm not sure if you have the Rosé at the Cuvaison. Uh, not in BC. Yeah. Darcy, so you guys don't have it. Not in Alberta either. Francois? Not yet. No, we don't, we don't have it in Quebec. We only have Champersin and uh, um, Method Traditionnel. So the rosé, uh, so the rosé is 100% Pinot Noir as well. Uh, we do it on the on the saigné style, so it's um, it's a skin contact method. Uh, so we let macerate the Pinot Noir uh, for a couple of days, time to get the the color from from the skin, and after we press and we we obtain the juice which is already pink. It's actually pretty pretty dark color. It's like blood color. And during the, the, the fermentation, uh, we are losing a little bit of color. And the goal is to have a, a light color of rosé. Because now, uh, you know, with the rosé de Provence trends, we need to be as light as, as possible. So we do a very nice, a very nice rosé. We have a lot of uh, demand for, for this one. Uh, we got 92 points when, when advocate. Uh, so yeah, we it's one of our best sellers, or so especially in the U.S. market. So Champersin is the uh, is a single vineyard champagne that we produce, 100% of Chardonnay. Uh, we don't do any malolactic for the champagne uh, to increase the freshness uh, and the minerality. And uh, it's one of our base champagne as well at the, at the Moutard family. Uh, it's, as I said, it, it shows a great example of what is a mineral champagne. And, uh, and is also one of the most successful champagne uh, at, uh, at, at, at Champagne Moutard. That, uh, yeah, that Francois carry in, uh, in Quebec. Another rosé from Damnel Vineyard. Well, you know, I'm I'm not going to speak a lot because you don't have this this champagne anyway. Uh, another uh, champagne from uh, from another plot of Pinot Noir that we do as well with no malolactic fermentation. So we do also a lot of single uh, plot champagne. Uh, so that's why I, I did uh, this map where uh, to place uh, the area of uh, every, uh, every plot. We do also some Cuvée Prestige, uh, Cuvée Prestige, uh, which is a pretty older uh, Cuvée. It's 50% uh, it's Chardonnay, 50% Pinot Noir, with a long, uh, a long age on, on the lease. But it's, it's a little bit more mature. Uh, with a nice roughness as well. So for rosé and, and white. And for the rosé, we do the blending method, uh, which consists in um, taking a white champagne and we put a little bit of red wine from champagne, of course, uh, before bottling uh, to, to create the, the rosé color. So it's a blend between white and red. Cuvée de Deceur, which is a Solera champagne. Uh, we do a Solera, we, we call it as well Reserve Perpetuelle. So, so that means we put, uh, we take a, a single vintage. So example for this one, we start making the Solera in, in 2004. And every year we extract a little bit of 2004 into the barrel and we refill with the new vintage, with 2005. And every year we do like this. So that's why we call it um, Reserve Perpetuelle, because we, we have a base uh, wine of 2004, but with 2005, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and we have a very complex city, uh, an ex exceptional complexity for this champagne. 
So it's an orange of Clima de Champagne. So the clim le Clima like in Burgundy. So it means specific, specific uh, terroir. So specific plot, specific Clima. Uh, and we did uh, five different Champagne from five different uh, plots. So Richardo with Pinot Noir, Les Troncs, Pinot Noir, Les Perrières in Pinot Noir as well, with of course different location to show the difference. Uh, a pure Chardonnay from Vincennes and also uh, Les Risset as well. With, uh, uh, we are using only uh, small barrels to make it and uh, also cork and stapple during the second fermentation and no dosage of course to show only the you know the purity of the of the champagne so the famous six cépages so a blend of one six of each pinot noir pinot meunier petit melier pinot blanc chardonnay arban uh, so the first vintage was released in 2000 and so since 2000 we produce uh, we produce six cépages so it's the same thing barrel barrel fermentation in vinification Cork and stoppers during all uh, the second fermentation process. So 10 years of aging on the leaves and also uh, Brut Nature. So now we are in 2010 vintage and we have also launched the Rosé, Rosé Six Cépages. So this is the Arban, Arban 2014. So we have a at Moutard family, we have the oldest plot of Arban all over the world. So our Arban plot has been planted in 1952. And from this plot, we produce a pure Arban VIV, uh, but we only do one 1,500 bottle per year. So it's a, it's a very small small production. And of course, the price is pretty high for, uh, for Arban. We launch a Heiss, Heiss Champagne. It, has not been really successful but uh, we still we still we we have it anyway in stock we produce also uh, champagne with no sulfate no added sulfite uh, it's still uh, hard you know it's not uh, what we're selling the most but if you have any request demand for no no added sulfite champagne of course we have it We produce also steel wine from Champagne. So what we call Coteau Champenois uh, from, uh, from Pinot Noir, but Pinot Noir in the red method and in the white method. So it's nice to be, to compare. So with the same grapes, we produce the red wine and the white wine from Pinot Noir, of course. And we do also Chardonnay, Chardonnay, Chardonnay steel wine. The six cépages in uh, on this pink color, you know, it's pretty eye catching. And uh, the, we did also a gold version of uh, of the six cépages. Uh, it was actually at the beginning it was for China, but uh, I, I'm selling it more in US than uh, than in uh, than in China. And the big bottle, so from uh, we produce. Uh, small bottle, 20 centiliter, to the biggest, which is the Nabucodonosor, uh, 15 liter. Yes, and uh, we, of course we are focused on gastronomy because we work with, uh, we, has, we, we, we are a partner of, of a French team competition of Bocuse d'Or, uh, and we are so part, we take part of the association Association of Chef and Food and Wine Producer promoting French gastronomy in the world. So this is uh, the Collège Culinaire de France, which is pretty famous in France. And uh, maybe a little bit as well in Canada or for maybe in Quebec. Uh, but it's a, it's a sign of, uh, it's a proof of, uh, of uh, you know, of, uh, of good, uh, good producer. 